All right, it is day one, two, three, four. Um, it is November 26th. It's 48 degrees outside, it's a Monday. Today was a really good day as far as work goes. Uh, we started at one building, which is at an elementary school. We had worked there on last Wednesday, which was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Um, we had worked there on Wednesday and we had put nipples into the ceilings, but we had forgotten that we were supposed to put boxes on the bottom of the nipple. So today we went through and we took the lock nuts off of the nipples, put boxes up, put the lock nuts back on. And then we had a couple extra guys with us. So they filled up, or they did a few more nipples and a few more lock nuts and a few more boxes. Then we went around the edge and we had some EMT nipples that were sticking up that were too short they were going to get filled up with concrete and I'm not sure why they didn't make them the correct length the first time we just had to lengthen those which to me seemed like poor planning but I'm sure it was just an oversight so we spent an hour or two going through and opening or uh, 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 basically putting new pieces of EMT on there um, I got to use a sawzall for a second I did an awful job I, 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 I haven't really spent a whole lot of time with the sawzall in my hands um, and they, one of the guys that I work with showed me showed me how to properly use it, which was cool. I was I was glad to, to, to learn the proper use of a sawzall. Things that I thought I knew, like uh, day two and three, I used a pole saw, and I thought that I thought that I knew how to use it, and I didn't. I was completely wrong. So these these are all little things that I'm learning that I had I had been taught wrong, which that definitely happens. You know, everybody does something a little different. One, one person says it's wrong, another person says it's right, and vice versa. So, um, I just feel really confident about the guys that I'm working with that when they tell me to do something that it's the right way, um, that, they're, that they're right, you know, that it really is the right way. Uh, so, we left from there, and we went over to this middle school building that we're working on. And this middle school building the concrete slab is, has not been poured yet. So it is just like a packed dirt, uh, packed dirt, gravel, rock, and then these foam blocks and it has plastic on it. And so we have, uh, what we did today was we took a shop vac and we, the shop vac has an attachment which they made and the attachment is a Pepsi bottle the Pepsi bottle is like a 20 ounce bottle with the top cut off where it's just uh, the funnel part of the Pepsi bottle, the bottleneck I guess you'd say, and it's taped on there with a hole in the side, you feed the, you feed the uh, string in through the side, set the bottle up against the, up against the conduit and turn, turn it, turn it on, and it blows the string, which you put something called a mouse, which is really cool, it's basically like a little foam block with the hook on it. And so you put the mouse in, uh, uh, attach to the string, you set it on the conduit and the air pushes it through the conduit. So we were doing that throughout a uh, good portion of the day and that was just to make sure that all of our, we, we put the string in there to make sure that all of our, uh, all of our conduits are clear and then we tape it up, which I got a cool compliment from my boss today. He, he was like, he was like, that's the right way to tape it right there. And I was like, yeah, it seems like the right way to tape it. He said, yeah, a lot of people do it this way, and that's just wrong. Uh, that, that's just wrong. It makes it harder to get off. And I'm like, well, cool. And, you know, it was my intuition to just jump in and do it the right way. Um, from there, we, we, we were, so we did all the, all the conduit blow. We ran into a couple of issues where the, we couldn't get the mouse through. And so what we had to do is we had to take a fish tape and push a fish tape up there. And the fish tape was able to dislodge some rocks, which was, which was really helpful. At one point we had one that one uh, mouse that was stuck in there and we used the fish tape and we pushed the fish tape on there and it literally grabbed the mouse and pulled the mouse back out because the fish tape has a natural hook on it. So um, we did that, we made sure to tape I went around and I taped everything and I, at the end of the day, I said, I said, I'm just gonna walk around and make sure we taped everything one last time before before we do concrete fill. So, cause they're gonna do a cement pour tomorrow at 4.30 in the morning and I won't be there for that. So there's no way, for, I don't want my boss to have to get out there and double check. So I went around and I made sure everything was full just so everything was taped. So that way no cement is getting into the conduit pole. 
or in, into the conduit links. Uh, we had to drive a ground rod today, which we had previously tried, tried to or drive this ground rod, and we drove it straight down next to the retaining wall, which holds in all of the concrete. The problem is, is that they have, um, at the bottom of the retaining wall, they have concrete that pours out over it, and it only goes two or three feet. So we were trying to do it right where the retaining, right next to the retaining wall, and there was concrete getting in the way. And so we ended up having to do it at an angle, and so, if it's it's hard to describe exactly how we did it, but we but, but we did it at an angle like let's say 45 degrees, right? And so we have it at 45 degrees, and we get it all the way in there, and then we have to bend it straight to where it points straight up, and then we they had to heat up a piece of like three quarters or one inch, probably probably one inch. It was probably a one inch piece of PVP. They heated up one inch PVC and slid it onto that copper rod. Well, it's steel clad, copper clad aluminum, cl copper clad steel. I think um, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. So I bet it was steel. Anyways, they uh, we we covered up that PVC, and so that way we can, it, we, that way we just won't get any cement on that copper, on that 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 copper clad PVC, or that copper clad steel. I guess you'd say. Um, that really was the whole day. Nothing, nothing interesting happened tomorrow. They're doing the cement pour. They're going to pour all of the cement. Um, and when they are done with that, they are going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to work on this other building with, with the other nipples. Uh, with, the, we're, we're going to put in the remainder of the nipples. We don't have that lifeline put up yet. It was supposed to be put up today. When we were leaving, my boss went to go check and see if it was put up. So... We have to go tomorrow whenever we're done. Making sure that they didn't ruin any of our conduit. We're going to go. Hopefully we're going to put the rest of the nipples on there. And once we put the rest of the nipples on there, then they can go ahead and pour concrete there too. They were waiting on us, but we were also waiting on them. So ultimately they were waiting on themselves to pour the concrete in the ceiling of this second building, which is pretty funny to me. Um... I think I think that's really it for the day. There's not there's not a whole lot uh, a whole lot else that we did. We we really spent the day just on two specific projects. Um, tool of the day, my tools are in the trunk. But tool of the day is a Klein eleven and one. Um, I don't know if you can see eleven and one on there or not, or if it's too bright. But this is an eleven and one. It has um, it has uh, so so it doesn't have eleven bits in it. It has a number one square, a number two square, and then it has a T25 and a T20 Torx head. It has, on the other side, it has a big Phillips, small, big Phillips, big flat, big Phillips, or little Phillips, little flat, which is a really pointy Phillips, so it can even get into stuff that's like a, like really small, really small ones. It's not just, just just medium sized ones. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty small one. It has a, a quarter inch hole, a quarter inch nut driver, a quarter inch nut driver, three eighths inch. So let's see, number two, I'm going to count out. So I've got number two square, number one square, T25, T20, big Phillips, little Phillips, big flat little flat so that's eight and so I know it's got quarter I know it's got three eighths it must have one more yeah so this one's a quarter this is three eighths this must be a half inch or maybe it's like a 10 millimeter I'm not I'm not really sure but this one this end is definitely bigger than this end here so that's that's what all 11 are so Everything that I listed before, plus a, I bet you it's a quarter or three eighths and a half. Um, but I'd have to look up what the Klein Eleven and One is. But it is really helpful, especially quarter inch, quarter inch, um, quarter inch bits you run into all the time. So it, it is really helpful to just have a quarter inch bit driver uh, right there without, ha or quarter inch nut driver right there without having to hunt one down. I do want to buy the Klein. I think it's a six in one or an eight in one 
nut driver it's just really heavy but it'd still be nice to have or even just a Klein nut driver set because they have a full you know set of nut drivers that you can buy um, I just don't need one I haven't I haven't ran into the need for one I have my ratchet set which is missing a 10 millimeter by the way I'm very much upset about that the fact that I'm missing a 10 millimeter for my ratchet set because I'm not the one who lost it I guarantee it um, I think that's really it for the day. I'm at the ten and a half mark, so uh, hopefully the video is not too shaky. Uh, have a good day.